Welcome to the Chicago Bears Podcast. A presentation of ESPN Chicago, Chicago's home for sports. Here's your host, Pat, the designer. Chicago, what's good? Welcome to another edition of the Chicago Bears podcast. Pat the designer in the building. J Mac sitting next to me as always. J Mac, what's going on, brother? How you feeling today? Can't complain, man. Excited, uh, really excited. Had the opportunity, Pat, to go to uh, Hallis yesterday. Uh, we had our Bears alumni barbecue. So, got to see a lot of my former teammates, got to see a lot of the Bears greats that came before myself. But also got a tour of the new renovations up there at Hallis Hall. I've been up there so many times, but I haven't been in to see the new renovations they've made to the weight room, the training room, and the yeah. entire building. Man, it's unbelievable uh, all the resources that these guys have there. So uh, that was good. Got to see a little bit of practice as well. Uh, first time that I've, I've actually been able to go see practice. I'll be going there after our pod as well. Uh, mini camp starts. So I'll be go checking that out as well. So it's been good, man. It's, it's been fun. Uh, you know, football is, is starting to kick off. Obviously, basketball just ended, so I'm ready to get the football as soon as possible. We're, do- we're all in on the football right now. We got to talk about your observations from minicamp. Looking at uh, also some of the best duos, Justin Fields and DJ Moore coming in on NFL.com's rankings. Good to hear that, I guess. Good to hear the new quarterback wide receiver duo is on the radar. Uh, Justin Jones comments for Packers fans. Want to get a Bears player's perspective on what he said. And then finally... The greatest football movie of all time. Mm. What is it? We'll talk about all that more in today's episode of the Chicago Bears podcast. Let's get into the first quarter. First quarter. Because, J Mac, like you said, you were out at training or uh, at mini camp yesterday. And you got to observe a lot of what was going on. You said your son got a little bit of coaching out there. Yeah. Like it, it's always a good time when the when the kids out there prepping for the future career, right? Like the genes are strong. Yeah. I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Bears, the Bears do a great job. You know, it was our uh, alumni barbecue that I alluded to earlier at the start of the show. Um, our alumni barbecue. So they invite all the you know former players, and uh, you know they have the food there. You get to tour the facility. And it's great because you see a lot of guys. And you know, I saw Otis Wilson uh, yesterday. I haven't seen Big Otis in a long time. Uh, Adrian Peterson, former running back for us. He's in town. He's actually staying with me in my house. One of my best friends. He's back in town. I saw R.W. McCorders. I don't know if you remember R.W. McCorders. Former okay. Back was in the house. Um, a lot of guys there. Izzy Adana J was there. So it's good that the Bears do that. And that just shows that, you know, this is a – it's obviously a family-run organization but they like to keep things within the family and they always welcome family back. And, you know, a lot of things that I saw in terms of the players, the current players, I saw, you know, a lot of, a lot of family. I saw the DBs, they stayed after practice as a unit. Uh, they were catching balls off the jug machine. They were getting extra footwork in. I saw our guy, Rashawn Johnson, catching balls off the jug machine. Uh, Coach Flues, uh, he invited all the alumni. We took a picture with the team, but he also stayed and talked with a lot of people. I mean, particularly talked to my, my son, Jordan, and he was coaching him up for like 10 minutes uh, prior to his media obligations and, and teaching him how to uh, and how to play a little bit of corner and giving him some tips and stuff like that. And I thought I thought that was really cool. So, you know, it, it's good to see that, um, you know, these guys are, are gelling on the field. It's good to see them putting the work after practice. So I think, you know, all that stuff is the makings of a, of a good culture, a good locker room and all that stuff like we talked about over and over again on this pod. All of those things combined lead to success. So, you know, I, I think we're trending in the right direction. Um, I'll be out there today to get my first glimpse of mini camp practice. And, uh, you know, I know this team is hungry. I know they're going to put in work. And uh, a, lot, a lot of big athletes on that team. You know, I, I know I talked to you, Pat, before the show. Uh, Javon Dexter, defensive tackle, is huge. I mean, that's a big dude. I mean, he, he's, he's, <laughs> he's athletic, man. He's out there moving around and uh, – he, he was getting some pressure, you know, in, in the team periods that I saw. Obviously, there's no pads, but, I mean, it's hard to, to judge a book by its cover. You can't, you know, get a glimpse of how good he can be just based upon the size. But, I mean, they drafted a, a huge guy that looks super athletic. So, I'm really excited to see him play. Uh, Darnell Wright's a big dude, bigger than what I thought. You know, yeah. you, you see the numbers when they draft him in terms of 
you know, you see it on paper. When you see it in person, it's another thing. You know what I mean, Pat? Like, I'm like, wow, like, I play with some big offensive linemen, but he's, he's a big dude. He's, there's some big guys. And the funny thing is, to me, being old as I am now, they're just kids. I mean, they're, right. they're just kids, man. So uh, all, all those guys are great. I'm excited for it. I'm excited to see them, you know, the preparation continue to take place. And I'm excited to see minicamp today. It's it's so funny, right? Because like I think of you know I think of all offensive linemen as huge, but then you start to see some of the numbers of the guys that were like standing with you guys in front of you guys, right? You you y'all had some like six threes, some six fours. Bears offensive line, even Ryan Poles talked about this. He was like, it's abnormally large. Like they're like six five to six seven all the way across. Yeah. So it is hilarious to like I I, I can't even I, I all I can equate it to because. I remember I went to the Bulls game and we we end up sitting courtside. And like on TV, when you see these mugs, you think like, oh, DeMar DeRozan's like not that much taller than me. Like I'm six foot, five inches ain't that much. And then I saw him standing there. I was like, hey, bro, like six, five is really tall, bro. Like this mug is <laughs> enormous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Don't> get, <laughs> so it, it's always interesting to see, like get the feel of the players up close. Um, when you when you were out there, though, when you were observing you know, what, what this team was doing, what really stood out to you the most? What was the thing that that really, you know, popped off the charts for you when you were sitting out there? Yeah, for me, and, and it's how fast they were playing. And I know that's the expectation for any NFL team to play fast in terms right. of whatever phase you're in. But they were playing real fast, man, in the team periods. I mean, when, when Justin threw that ball out there to the receiver, the entire defense, everybody on the defense was rallying to the ball, to the ball full speed. And nobody was left standing around watching the play. They were all going to that ball trying to make a play. And I think that the, the one thing that I really noticed about practice too, Pat, was the tempo. I mean, it was an upbeat tempo. They weren't wasting no time. They were going from period to period, drill to drill. And you can tell that, you know, Eberflus wants practice to be ran at, at that up tempo, you know, to, to fall in line with the hence principle that he has and uh, that he's installing up there. So it was good. A lot of competition. Um, obviously, it, it's – it, it, it's it's you like you, you're encouraged to see that that speed, but now I'm more so encouraged. Like I want to get to training camp because I want to see what they do in pads. You know what I'm saying? It's one thing to see a you know, receiver go over the middle and catch a ball in the air, knowing he's not going to get hit because there's pad, there's no pads on. Right. I want to see you know what these guys do when the pads come on. I want to see like the type of physicality that they're going to play with when the pads come on. But it was encouraging to see how fast they were playing. Um, they had a situational period in which they were running a play and then they had an alert field goal. So we used to call that May Day field goal to where you one, one, run one offensive play, you yeah. have no timeouts, field goal team rushes on the field. You got to get it quick. Uh, you know, you want to get that ball off, uh, that kickoff quick due to the fact that you have no timeout. So they ran through that with every group. They ran through that with the ones, twos, and the threes. And I thought that was a real competitive period. Um, so you know, it, it holds true. You know, Coach Flues is really starting to – uh, practice situation of football. They're not going to leave any stone unturned because we know these situations are going to come about throughout the season. You know, who knows when, but you got to be prepared for, for anything that comes your way. What would you see from Justin out there? I mean, you saw him, you said you saw him throwing the D ball. Do you think that that's going to be a focus for this team, right? Like, I mean, we, we heard yesterday that they've been practicing that, that one to two connection all off season. Yeah. Um, do you think that that's, that it, does, does it feel like right because I can equate it to last season when they came in, they were like, we're going to be a run heavy team. These guys don't seem to lie to us, which is very different for football coaches. Like they, they like mm -hmm. what I told you we're going to do. We did. We were a run heavy team all season. Does it seem like they're going to focus on the deep ball a ton this season just early on? Yeah. The funny thing is what I saw from my observation of practice. And like I said, we, we weren't there the whole time because of the tour, but we got right. there just in time to see majority of the team periods. Um, I saw, the ball really getting out quick. So it looks like they're working on a quick game. You know, mm -hmm. I think it looked like it may have been a blitz period where that ball was coming out. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so it was good to see that because last year we know what we saw from Justin, a guy who was holding the ball and was waiting to see his receiver open instead of throwing him open. Right. So he was doing a better job of getting that ball out quick. And I'm not sure if they have him on the clock in terms of, you know, counting in terms of soon he takes that snap, you know, we want this ball out in so many seconds. So, that's kind of what it looked like to me. But he did take his shots. He threw about two or three deep balls. Um, he connected on one of like, I think he connected on one of those deep balls. A couple, um, you know, kind of went out of bounds. So yeah. it was interesting to see. I don't, I don't, I think they're going to focus on taking the shots when they're there. 
or taking their shots to keep the defense honest. But I think what they want to do this year is to get that ball out of Justin's hands quicker. And with that, I think he'll be able to do that just because, like we talked about before, him being in this offense for the second year, you know, his he's going to be able to go through his progression faster. He's going to get a pre-snap read and really understand where he wants to go with the ball um, pre-snap. So that's going to make that ball come out even quicker. That's going to make this offense more efficient. And that's going to make us more dangerous because now as soon as that ball out, balls out the defense, they can't just blitz and they can't dictate, you know, how the game's going to be played. We can dictate to the defense offensively. Let's get into the mind of Coach Mack real quick. Coach J Mack's on the field. You're seeing a lot of single high. Bears saw a lot of single high last season um, where they basically said, we don't believe you're going to throw this ball deep. <laughs> we, we basically think you're going to try and use your legs to make a play. Mm -hmm. How do you come out and attack that early on in the season? Because I think that we will see that again this season just because of that same belief, right? I, I, I said this yesterday with Courtney. I think a lot of defenses are going to take the approach with Justin that um, teams took with Mitch Trubisky, where we're going to try and force you to play quarterback. We're not going to let you use your legs to beat us because we know that's a dangerous weapon. You're going to have to use your arm. How are you attacking that offensively? Yeah, I mean, the receivers are going to have to make plays. You know what I'm saying? If you're if you're, if you're you're getting singled up, especially DJ Moore, they're not going to double. You have to make plays. And Justin has to realize that he's going to have to give his guys an opportunity to make plays. You know, and I don't know if he just didn't – obviously, I don't know if he was not – he obviously wasn't as comfortable as he was in the offense as he will be this year. Right. But they're going to take away that run. They're not going to let him run. They're going to try to take away our running game because we know we excelled at that last year. And like you said, they're going to force him to stay in the pocket and beat, they want to try to make him uncomfortable. So, you know, things like I talked about, him getting the ball out quick, I think is, is Gessie's job to make him comfortable within the offense and get him in rhythm early, whether you're throwing screens, whether you're throwing intermediate routes, in which they did a number of times yesterday, do a lot of hitches, things like that, high percentage throws to get him comfortable, to get him in rhythm. I think that's important. And then when you have, you know, new receivers, you have DJ Moore and I think Tyler Scott, the speedster, you have guys yeah. that can – really create mismatches, um, then you take your shots when necessary. Um, the good thing is I, I got a chance to see Darnell Mooney and I talked with him a little bit. And uh, just from what I've seen, and obviously I'm not I'm not one of the trainers and anything like that, but he did look healthy. Um, he said he was excited um, to come back. So you add another weapon like him, a guy that can beat, you know, press covers, man covers, a guy that can make plays, a guy that has a feel for running routes in any type of zone that they can present uh, to that offense. I think he's another guy that'll, that'll be a weapon for Justin. And, uh, you know, when you have those, that many options and you have a quarterback that's in rhythm and he's building confidence and getting that ball out on time in rhythm when he's supposed to be, it will be real dangerous. So, like you said, Pat, it's going to be interesting to see. I think that, you know, like you said, teams are going to try to take away the run. They're going to try to take away the quarterback design runs from Justin and say, hey, you know, we want to see what you can do in year two in this offense. We want to see if you can actually play quarterback in this league at a high level. How do you connect the practice field to the field? So what I mean by that, right? Like we, I've seen a lot of people look great in practice. Like I, I've seen mugs practicing up close in almost every sport. And I'd be like, bro, like, how is this man not in the league? And then you see him in a game and he'd be like, oh, he don't do that when he get in the game. <laughs> how do you connect what you're doing in practice, the, the confidence that you're building in practice to actually getting onto the field? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know what? It's just you have to practice like you're going to play. You know what I mean? And, and you have to make practice like the coaching staff. You have to make practice as close to a game like tempo, as close to a game like situation as you can. So that way, you know, like I said, the Bears were, were, were doing that uh, team period in which they were, they were alert, made a field goal and running an offense play and bringing that field goal team on the field to get that last second kick. Like, if yeah. you don't practice those high pressure situations, well, then the players will never be ready for that because it'll be the first time uh, that they're exposed to it during the game. So, uh, being able, to, like, you just got to be consistent too, man. You got to work on the little things, and just you got to know, especially as a young player, that this is going to be magnified. You know what I mean? It's different catching passes out there in the Peyton Center and actually going out to Soldier Field in front of the crowd uh, when it's cold, when it's hot outside. Like you're a pro, you're expected to make. The roots you can play over and over again, regardless of what the situation is, whether you got troubles at home, you know, you yeah. manage your girlfriend, your wife, or whatever, or, or this and that, you still have to go out there and do your job. So the great ones, they can do that. They can go out there. They can go out there and they can, they can play like they did in practice. And, you know, for the young guys, 
as a young guy in this league in that locker room, you have to go out there. You have to find a vet who's obviously had success in the league for a long time. You got to do, you got to take notes. Okay. What is he doing during the week in terms of his preparation? He's in the waiting room at six o'clock. He's eating the right food. You know what I mean? He's, he's out there on the practice field. He's practicing hundred miles an hour. So that way in the game, it's not new to him. So the young guys, I think they got to emulate the older guys who've had success in this league. And I think that'll help their, their progression in terms of being a pro and, and playing at an next level on Sunday. Were you a superstition, a routine guy? You had to do everything the same way, same style, left sock, right sock, and then I go out on the field. Were you that guy on the field back in the day? No, no. Some guys were, man. Some guys would lay out their whole uniform <laughs> on the ground, like their wristbands, <laughs> like what they were going to wear, their gloves, like, you know, lay it out on the ground like it was a mannequin. Um, yeah. I, I was in that way. The only thing that I did, um, and, and, I, and I listened to, uh, you know, James Brown before every game. Elizabeth James Brown tracks, the big payback, all that stuff. Old school. I was an old school guy. So if I didn't have my James Brown before the game, it didn't get me in that mode. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, had, I had to be ready to go out there and, and run into to 250, 260 pound linebackers and defensive tackles that just as big as Javon Dexter, uh, <laughs> things like that. So I had, had to get my mind right, man. But yeah, uh, no, no true superstitions. Just just James Brown had to be playing on my on my on my playlist. James Brown did it back in the day of CD players, ladies and gentlemen, for those who are younger out here trying to listen into the podcast. That's a uh, you put a disc into a device and it played sound. That's, yeah. uh, it's crazy to think that we <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is we went from we went from that. We went from the uh, the Dismans. Remember, they were called Dismans. Yeah, I skipped one. So it had that extra layer that really clamped down on that. On that CD. <laughs> and then we had the uh, what are they? The, 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 iP- the iPod. What are the they? iPod. The iPod, we had the iPod, and, and and man, when that iPod came out, everybody thought it was the coolest thing. Everybody's getting on the bus with their iPod. You know, you had to show it that you had the iPod. <laughs> that old school, when it's like this fat, you out there, yeah. like, yeah, man, let me just get through some of these songs out here, man. Give me a second. Man, I got a move. I got a full movie on here. It's the only thing that's on this month. But can you imagine nah, before that, Pat, when, when the Dismans were out, you had to carry all your CDs with you. So you had like your luggage. The case. And you had the case logic. The case was like every, every, you had every, us, uh, uh, you know, the in that case logic. The CD case was clutch. I had it yeah. alphabetized so you could just flip through that mug, boy, be like, bow, got the Eagles right here. <laughs> bow, Usher. Yeah, I mean, you had to have that mug on point, bro. Like, we used to be trading CDs back in the day. Oh, man, we're old. Uh, yeah, too old, man. Too old. <laughs> I, oh, I'm old. No, I don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm saying I'm uh, too old. I'm too, uh, you, you uh, saying, man, I'm too old. Uh, 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 do, you, do you look at practice? That's actually funny, the old, young conversation. Do you look at practice and be like, man, y'all got it easy out here, bro. Y'all, y'all, y'all out here killing it out here, boy. I, back in our day, two a days. Man, I ain't gonna lie to you. When we, the fun <laughs> thing is, we're all touring the facility, right? Yeah. And, I mean, they did a great job of renovating. I mean, it, it's beautiful. It's it's five star all the way around. I mean, it's almost like you're in a dang like country club. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like when I yeah. by the end of the tour, I wanted to get a pedicure, manicure. <laughs> 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 they got a Bears card for that. The bear, former bear. Yeah, man. It's like, yeah, I'm a member here. Uh, I'm a member here. I'm a pedicure. Like, but uh, man, you know, you, you walk through that facility and you look at like, I mean, the, the renovations they did. And you you know you go in the equipment room and my my guy T Med who's Tony Medlin who's been the equipment manager there for a long time oh, really yeah. guy, tremendous guy still gives it back to a lot of schools in the community. Um, you go in the equipment room and everything's laid out like a store. They got all the cleats on the wall, all the gloves, <laughs> everything on the wall. <laughs> Me and AP we're looking at each other, and I told PS, you know what? I'm happy that they did this. I said, but. Is it right for me to be like mad at the same time? I'm, like, I'm, 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 I'm happy, Pat, but I'm pissed. And I'm like, hey, P, I'm so mad we didn't get this. I just want to rip everything off the walls. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm like, it, it is there, like T Med showing us how, you know, now they, they have a machine and you scan the player's feet. And he said, one of, one of, the, he said one of the things, like most players, one foot is bigger than the other. So I'm, right. like, okay. I'm like, so T Med, you just put us in any old cleats because we didn't have that. So you just put us in it, gave us any old cleats. That's why my feet hurt right now. <laughs> you know? But uh, it, I mean, it's awesome, man. They've got, I mean, they, they've got it made. They're, they have everything at their disposal. 
Um, you know, I think they, they put together a great staff, obviously strength staff, uh, nutrition. They got a full cafeteria, training room huge. So they got no excuses to be uh, three and 14 again. I'll be <laughs> <laughs> they probably had that last year too. You think the Bears cut them off? After yeah, they, yeah, they, I'm, I'm just saying, like first year, you, you get a, you know, it's, it's like a red shirt for the coach. You know what I'm saying? First year, you're just getting to learn your players, new gym. Yeah. This ain't no red shirt no more. We need you to play, man. We need you. Hey, to play. They, no. they lose four games in a row. They be like, hey, y'all get no more gloves until y'all start winning some games, bro. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta get some wins for gloves. <laughs> you gotta take some stuff away, man. If, they, if it ain't performing, so. Second quarter. Oh, man, let's keep this thing moving along. Let's jump out here because let's hope that the performance does take a step. And NFL.com actually put out an article where basically listing the top nine duos or that are the best new combination wide receiver to quarterback. Yep. And uh, I mean, listen, it, it's good to see the Bears on here. It's good to see the Bears uh, uh, land on this list. Good to see Justin Fields and, and DJ Moore land on this list. Your top five new duos is a little bit surprising to me, though. Number one, they got uh, Aaron Rodgers and uh, Garrett Wilson. I can see that. I can yeah. see that. I saw the celebration by them. Lamar Jackson, Odell Beckham, number two. That one's a little interesting to me. I don't know about that one. I don't know about that. Well, like, it, I, I'm glad they got him a number one, but like they got him a number one after like a couple of injuries and going out there. Hopefully he plays well. Yeah. Trevor Lawrence and Calvin Ridley, number three. Derek Carr and Chris Olave, number four. And our own Justin Fields and DJ Moore slot in number five, just ahead of Jimmy Garoppolo and Devontae Adams. So my Ooh. question to you, J-Mac, when you see this list, are the Chicago Bears slated pretty properly, right? Or, or would you have them higher on this list as new duos? Yeah, I, I would have them higher than, you know, you talked about number two. You talked about, who was that, Lamar Jackson and uh, Lamar and Odell. Odell. I think yeah. I'd have everybody higher than them. I'm not going to Yeah, I mean, Odell, obviously, I, I, he's still a great player. I mean, he was, he was tremendous before, before the injuries, but he's coming off of, what, two ACL injuries? Yeah. Um, you know, I. Ah, you know, I want it's like with him, you say prove it. I mean, he's been successful in this league for a long time, but I need to see Odell post injury again. Like, yeah, can you regain that form? Because obviously, he regained form after the first injury, helped uh, you know, help that team win the Super Bowl when he was with the, uh, with the Rams. But now yeah. we'll see, you know, can you come back and be the Odell that we're used to seeing after the second ACL injury? Uh, so I would rank them lower. Um, the crazy thing is, it just makes you think, and I don't want to get off topic, but. You look at Chris Olave, and then you have uh, Garrett Wilson and um, Aaron Rodgers, number one. I mean, that Ohio State receiving room, man. Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> on, man. Like, that's, it, like, that's unfair. Like, you had all those guys, you know, in that room. Like, you're – I mean, it's it's it's, it's crazy. Like, they I, I'll that. take Marvin Harrison Jr. next season for uh, two first-round picks, please. Sure. Huh? Like, <laughs> man, you, it. you had all those receivers in that receiving room, man. It's, yeah. It's crazy, man. It, it's it's funny to see, right, because I feel like with the Bears, with most of these teams, right, you look at the, the duos mm -hmm. and our question mark is on, OK, but what's the wide receiver going to do there? Right. I, for the most part, I guess Lamar a little bit more. Right. But for the most part, I know what a lot of the quarterbacks can do in these situations with the Bears. The difference in the situation is that our questions on Justin Fields, we know what DJ Moore can be right. with bad quarterback play. We're mm -hmm. hoping that. He doesn't continue to have bad quarterback play. But the, the real question is, what is Justin Fields going to be able to do to get to that next step? And I I mean, like, listen, I'm I'm all in on this. I uh, um, Sports Illustrated put out an article basically saying that they believe that Justin Fields can um, make Bears history. I don't know if you know this, J-Mac, but uh, we haven't had a lot of quarterback pro bowlers. We've got two. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's Jim McMahon and Mitch. It's not a great list. I'm not going to lie. Shout out Jim McMahon. Ah, the second one. You know, but they believe that Justin Fields can make this leap. When you look at this list, when you look at this new ranking, do you believe that Justin Fields with DJ Moore is the combination that unlocks the Chicago Bears offense and unlocks, more importantly, Justin Fields? Yeah, I think so. When you talk about DJ Moore, the fact that he hasn't had a lot of upper echelon quarterbacks that he's been paired with. Um, you look at, so that he, so we talk about, 
the quarterback being a multiplier, well, you have a receiver that can be a multiplier as well, just because yeah. of the fact that he can get open, you know, versus press coverage. Um, he can also be your security blanket because you know he's going to make a play when his number's called. So you can go to him at any given moment in the game. And I think DJ Moore is that type of receiver. And to, it's different too. The play receiver in Chicago, like, yeah. you got to be rugged. You know what I mean? You got to have some grit to you because obviously we know when it gets cold outside, when that wind blows off Lake Michigan, when it's snow on the ground, you got to have some grit, you know, to be able to play receiver and continue to make plays. So I think he's a perfect fit. Um, I actually like him higher than looking here at number four on the list, Derek Carr and Chris Olave. Like, I just think DJ Moore is a better <laughs> player than Chris Olave. You know what I'm saying? Like, Chris, like, you got to show me, you got to show me again. Like, I can't anoint you after one season. You had a great rookie season, but new quarterback, you know what I'm saying? I think that DJ Moore is a better receiver than you. Now, the argument would be, I'd ask you, Pat, is, is Derek Carr compared to Justin Fields. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's... <sighs> Listen, I, and I, this is not the crap on Derek Carr. I've had this conversation because my guy, Kid, uh, does the Windy City Breeze with me, is a Derek Carr fanatic. Like, not, a, not really, but he always goes to bat for Derek Carr, right? And I've mm -hmm. never seen people move the goalposts more for a player in my life. Like it, it, it's it, one season, you know, when when Derek has all the weapons, everything that he needs is, yeah. oh, but, you know, the the offensive play calling wasn't as good It's like, I mean, get the ball to Devontae Adams. Mm -hmm. like that, that, your, your job is to get the ball to Devontae Adams. Let's, let's do that a lot more um, before that. Right. Like, I feel like there's always something else. That is the problem. Derek Carr is never the problem in these situations, and yet he's only been to one playoff game. Mm -hmm. And maybe this all changes in New Orleans. But like you said with with uh, Odell, to me, Derek Carr has got to prove it to me. Yeah. I think you've got you've got all the weapons. I I, I still got a ton of questions on their head coach down there too. I, I'm not going to act like I don't. Yeah. I, I I don't know. I maybe Derek Carr is that guy that just never finds the right situation. Right, like I guess that is a thing, and you you'll always look at him and be like, "Oh, he's a good quarterback," but that wasn't the right spot for you to be at. So I I think that's my question. I still have him above Justin, mm -hmm. but because I've seen him perform well, and we've yet to see Justin perform well with his arm. I guess I should say. Yeah, and looking at it too, number three, Trevor Lawrence and Calvin Ridley. You know, I, I like Trevor Lawrence. I think he's obviously he's, he's a good quarterback. He's proven that this time in the league. But the question is, Calvin Ridley. Yeah. He's been gone for a while. You know what I mean? And, and NFL is about, you know, what have you done for me lately? Well, he hasn't done anything lately because he hasn't played in a while. And you're going off numbers. What did he It says 2020 he had. Uh, what did he have? Over 1,300 yards. Well, that was in 2020. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, can he come back and, and regain form? How long is it going to take him to get rid of the rust? You know, he hasn't been in that competitive environment for a long time. And you can do all the training you want. We just talked about this with practice, right? You can practice. <clears throat> you can do all the training you want. But the thing you can't do is, you know, amongst yourself, if you're not with the team, yeah. you cannot bring that type of pressure situation or they gain type of environment to, to your practice session or to, or to your training session with your trainer. Like, it's almost impossible to, to simulate that. So. I want to see, you know, can he come back and regain his form? You know, can he adapt to that 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 the speed of the game, which he hasn't had for over a year? Like, can and the tough part, the the tough part to me is right, like it, it's that first contact, right? Like getting back into like when you, I I, I all I could equate it to because listen, football. I told y'all my story on football. Like that was the end of football for me. Like I'll go out there and I will play. Yeah. With like a bunch of dudes that don't really play, but like, nah, I wasn't sitting out there banging for real with these mugs. But I, I would assume that, right, like, is is similar to like weightlifting. If you take off a year of weightlifting and then all of a sudden you're like, all right, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna lift heavy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All of a sudden it's like, oh snap, like I my body is not used to this in the slightest anymore. Right. Like it's not like he's coming back to a situation where you can just ease yourself into this. There's somebody on the other side that's gonna try to take your head off. Yeah. Play one. Yeah. Somebody that's, <laughs> so, gonna, that's gonna take your head off. Gonna, <laughs> your head off well, it's a little, it's a little safer now. You can't literally take his head off, so they got to kind of hold him and lay him down gently. You know what I mean? You can't land on top of. It's a lot of things, a lot of factors. In there. <laughs> Maybe, which, sometimes you got to give players what you call a heart check. 
Okay, you take the penalty. I'm gonna thump him. And then <laughs> we're gonna thump him. And we're gonna take the penalty and see if he comes back. But he still got that heart. That's called a heart check. That's the heart check. I <laughs> even <laughs> that. Do, you got, do you got heart? Do you got heart? Hey, hey. You back up and line up and, and and play the next play. If not, we'll see you on the sideline. I ain't gonna lie to you. This be my favorite. Not 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 you know to that extent, but this be my favorite plays to hear about when. When somebody just like, oh no, we told him the next play, let him through. Let's see what happened. <laughs> or we told we told him the next play. Oh, don't worry about it. Right, hey coach, we take it 15. All right, well, my bad. That's all <laughs> whatever y'all do. <laughs> uh it's gonna be an interesting matchup this season, man. It's gonna it's gonna be an interesting. I, I like all the duos on here. I have intrigue on almost every single one. Some of the ones behind uh Justin Fields and uh DJ Moore. Dak Prescott and Brandon Cooks. Dak is Dak is the ultimate question mark to me yep. in, in this league um, because like I look at him and I say he's a good quarterback mm -hmm. and then every year we get the same result and it's usually because of some mistake that continues to happen again very much like Derek Carr with him but we will move the goalpost on everybody else uh, also I don't know what that last play was last season and then Baker Mayfield Mike Evans coming in eight. Mm -hmm. I have no intrigue on that. I'm not going to lie to you. Say, I don't even really, you know, I I mean, Evans is a great receiver. Don't get me wrong. Evans, is a, he's a dog, bona fide dog. But Baker, you know, he's hot and cold. You know, he'll torture you one yeah. game, and the next game you're like, what is he doing? You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I think the, the inconsistency there uh, with him, you know, he's still got to win that quarterback composition too. So we don't know if, you know, it's going to be him or Kyle Trash. But at the same time, when you have – you know, Mike Evans, the receivers are used to playing with the with the GOAT, in my opinion, and Tom Brady. And then, you know, it's it's you bring in Baker Mayfield, like you're like, oh, it's a little different. You know yeah. what I mean? It's a little different. Like the, you know, is he still, you know, dissecting the defense at the way Tom did? Probably not. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's totally different. Yeah. So I, I I look at, you know, I don't think Mike's gonna have the same production that he had with Brady just because the quarterback difference. I mean, it's, it's obvious. And, and I mean, the, I, I'm going to be honest with you. The last one they have on the list is more intriguing to me because can Juju Smith be that number one with Mac exactly. Jones? Mac yeah. Jones, to me, I, I don't know what happened. Well, I do know what happened. For some reason, Bill Belichick was like, yeah, defensive coordinators can call offensive plays. Like, that works in the NFL. We've seen that happen all the time. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I, I think that they kind of set back back a little bit. And then... The whole uh, who was my man's that uh, that was the backup that came in there. It's not Purdy. Oh, what's they backup that everybody was? He came in during the Bears game and everybody was chanting his name. Yeah. Zappy, Brent, Bailey Zappy, yeah, Brandon Zappy, too. Bailey Zappy. Too. Yeah. So I mean, like I, I think that you know Bill kind of set him back a little bit. To me, him and Juju is a very intriguing uh, pairing, especially with. Um, you know, they, they basically swapped him out for Jacoby Myers. Exactly. So we'll kind of see what they'll be able to do this season, man. It's going to be interesting to see. Let's keep this thing moving along, though, because there is a uh, there is smoke back in Bears Packer land. And I love the smoke. Yes. I think that we're going to have a little bit more even competition. But Justin Jones was not thrilled that Aaron Rodgers was out of the division and even had some choice words for Packers fans. Let's listen in on that. How different is it going to be now that Aaron Rodgers is somewhere else? Uh, I wish he played one more year with uh, Green Bay, what? honestly. Uh, <clears throat> we went up there and uh, we, played a, we played a pretty good game, you know, but uh, they got away from us at the end, obviously, and uh, they won, but their fans are really shitty. So... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I wanted to go back up there, and I wanted to play him, and I wanted to beat them, and I wanted him to be there so you can see it. But the fact that he's gone now, you know, I mean, it's, it's cool. I guess it's better for him not to be here, you know. But um, but yeah, man, I'm, 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 I'm ready to take it over. I mean, it's a good time to be a Bears fan. I'm not even gonna lie to you. So this is a follow up question. I never thought of asking. Which ways are they shitty? <laughs> man, like, <laughs> I mean, man, like just just the way that they're just freaking obnoxious, just yelling and all that other stuff about things that don't even matter. Like we're not even running, we're not even running the play. You guys are talking about boo. Oh yeah, go green. Like what, what are we even talking? The game hasn't even started yet. Like what are we even talking about here? Like you know y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Half of them don't even know football. It's it's it's, it's so weird to me. But 
I'm just ready to go back out there and play. And I, I want to go out there and I want to beat the hell out of them, you know, on their field. And I want to hear I want to hear the booze then, you know, that that's what I look forward to. Now, uh, Jay, Matt, yeah, yeah, you know, yes. the team up yes. north, as yes. you like to call them. Uh, yes. Do you agree yes. with Justin Jones's assessment of that team yes. up north? A thousand percent. I love it, man. I love. It. I mean, it's 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 such a great rivalry, man. It's just, I mean, it, it's awesome. Like even when you know we, we would we would take the bus up to to Lamb, well, can't say Lambo because we stayed in Appleton, Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. shout out. It's to probably the for the best. Yeah, yeah. We, we shout out to the staff at the Radisson Paper Valley Hotel that we stayed in when we went there. Like they were good, but those are only people you know that I cared about that were a part of Green Bay or whatever. But <laughs> you know, going up there and, and and you know going to the game on game day. I mean, Lambo's in the middle of a neighborhood. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So you're driving through, through uh, you're driving through the neighborhood. And there's generations of hatred in terms of the Packers hitting the Bears. So you drive into the stadium and you look over, right? And you see grandma and grandpa give you the finger. You see mom and dad give you the finger. <laughs> then you see like the baby in the car seat giving you the finger. I'm like, they got the baby giving us the finger. You know what I mean? It's, it's that bad. So, you know, I share the same sentiment that he has with Packers fans. I think it's awesome, uh, you know, that he came out and said that because they're obnoxious. Even the Packers fans here in in, in 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 the Chicagoland area, they're obnoxious as well. Yeah. Um. You know, he the thing that I like that he said. You know, he wishes Aaron Rodgers was still there because obviously, you know, to to to, to be the best, you got to beat the best. And now Aaron Rodgers is not there, so if you beat him, is there going to be an asterisk on it saying, "Oh, well, A Rod wasn't there"? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But same time, hey man, you got to go out there and play, and and it's going to be good to see the Bears, you know, take back this rivalry. I'm going to claim it. Are you are you hoping for a uh, a Bears Jets Super Bowl at some point in the next two years so that we can finally see that? Because I'm not gonna lie to you. I, somebody asked you that. They're like, would you would you uh, take a Bears Super Bowl if you had to play the Jets in the Super Bowl? And I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> hey, look, look. I grew up with basically the end, well, a, a good chunk of Brett Favre's career and all of Aaron Rodgers' career. Yeah. He got me shook. I got PTSD over this man, bro. Like we, I, I like, yeah, yeah. Nobody was winning. Nobody could beat this shit. You know what I mean? Own you, he, a Rod, does he own you, Pat? I, hey, bro, listen, listen. I, it, it hurts to say, but when he threw this one, I'm not gonna lie. It was, it was like when he had that one, that one there. It was like, all right, say a goodbye to the fans. It was like, all right, a Rod. Like yeah. we don't need the goodbyes, brother. Yeah, we don't need like the goodbyes that. out here, bro. Like just go. <laughs> yeah, I was at that game and, you know, obviously leaving the game and, and then you know, you're riding home and you hear like him say that during his press conference. It, it got me fired up and I wasn't even playing. You know what I mean? I was like, I can stand that mother. Like, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choke him, put him in the headlock. You know what I mean? But it's, it's you know, it's, I mean, you, you look at what he's done um, and it's, you know, that he's just, man, it's just like, it's just like he just has your number. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he just has your number, but. The same time, I don't give a dang who's there or not. We got to take back the robbery. And oh yeah! Looking forward to it. Opening day, Soldier Field. Um, it's going to be exciting. Do you like that? It seems that players actually care about it because I feel like right, like we always hear like the, uh, you know, yes, yeah, the Packers they are rivals, blah blah blah. But it doesn't seem like anybody really cares as much about it anymore. I feel like Aaron really held that. And and it seems like Justin now has that like now nah, we got we got to beat the Packers like I don't care what else we do we got to beat the Packers. Uh, seems like Justin Jones as well. I was talking about Justin Fields, but Justin Jones, he's being very vocal about it. And and I feel like we haven't seen that in a while. Right, a lot of the coaching staff comes in and say, yeah, it's just, it's a division game, so it's more important. But it's the same as any other division game. And realistically, it's not. Yeah, as a player, like you. You hear that all the time as a player, you know, living in Chicago, in the Chicagoland area. You cannot go. There's nowhere you can go. And, you know, whatever you do, you can have the best season in the world. But if you don't beat the Packers, you're going to hear about it. Or if you can have the worst season in the world, and then they're going to say, hey, beat Green Bay. You know what I'm saying? Hey, can you beat Green Bay this year? Um, so it's it's ingrained in you, you know, whether you you care, whether, you know, you're you really care about that rivalry or not. You're almost forced to care about it because it's just – such the hatred between those these two organizations, you know, it's right. ingrained in you. It has to, it's it's ingrained in you as a player, whether you want that or not. So you know, even now I still, you know, walk around in the five, 
if I'm in the airport and I'm wearing, you know, some Bears gear and there's a Packers fan there, we're looking at each other like, yeah, I'm like, F you. He's like, yeah, F you too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's, no matter what, it's, all, it's always around you, man. It's always around you. It, it's, it's so, it's funny because it's like, there is that part of me that's like, oh, it's a little bit tainted because Aaron's not there. And I wanted to beat Aaron. I wanted to see us get over the mountaintop with Aaron there. But it's still, I think the thing is too, right? Like, we don't know what Jordan Love is going to be. Who's to say Jordan Love's not going to be a very good quarterback? I said, my hope is that Jordan Love's just good enough that they can't get rid of him, right? That means that he's probably going to get a couple of games versus the Bears over the span of time, right? Like, I, 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 my hope is just, I just want y'all to experience life without a quarterback. There's people that are 40 years old that don't know what life without a quarterback is like in Green Bay. Like, I want y'all, because remember, by the last, every time that they would lose in the first round, that, which was glorious. It was basically our Super Bowl every year. But every time they were losing the first round, if you listen to Packers radio or listen to Packers fans online, it was just get rid of Aaron. We don't need him. We don't want him. We don't want the dude to just won two MVPs through 43 touchdowns and five minutes. Y'all don't want that? We'll, we'll take him. Right, Riley, do you know what we're dealing with down here? <laughs> yeah, isn't that funny? As much as you, you, know, you hate the guy because he's on Green Bay, you know, you've got to respect the player. And, you know, I, I, my dislike for him is because he plays for that team up north, you know, but yeah. as, as, a, as a player, you know, as a former player and, and, as a, and as a fan of the game, I mean, you cannot knock what he's, what he's done for the game. You cannot knock the way he plays. Yeah. Um, you cannot knock the way he elevates the play of his teammates. You cannot knock that he is a, you know, all time great, one of the best to ever do it. I mean, he's consistent too. You know what I mean? Like, the dude just, now I'm not going to comment on him. Okay, that's the only praise I'm going to give him. I don't like <laughs> going to praise him. You know, you get what I'm saying. Like, he's a good player. Yeah. Believe it. He's going to be a great Jet. You know what I mean? He's going to be a great Jet. We'll talk about that. <laughs> part of the, uh, the paper plane. The, the paper plane. Bro. Oh, man. It, it's, it's, let's hope that we retake this rivalry. I'm not going to lie to you, though. Like, that, that first week, I, I said this when the schedule came out, that first week versus Green Bay, I'm glad that we have players with this mindset in here because that could set the tone for the rest of your season. I don't care if it is, right, like it's the Aaron Rodgers list Green Bay Packers. That getting a win versus your rival week one, and if you can do it in a convincing fashion, that can set you up with the confidence that you need moving forward. Who knows how many games you're able to rattle off after winning something like that, right? Like we finally get over the mountaintop. I bet that was our toughest hurdle. Now let's keep it going. So I, I, I'm excited to see uh, what week one is going to bring. And I think, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, let's hope that uh, there's a good ending to this movie. Yeah, I mean, you like that transition because we got to get yeah, into the fourth quarter. Yeah. Fourth quarter. Got to get into the fourth quarter because, J-Mac, you brought up an excellent conversation about the greatest football movies of all time. And you put this list up. Uh, I think we, yeah, let's throw that on the screen there. Mm. The best football movies of all time ranked by SOG. I don't know who SOG is. I don't know if you know who SOG is or if you just saw this randomly on uh on Twitter, but uh, they got these tiered and I'm not going to lie. I kind of disagree with some of these. I kind of disagree with some of these. The express to me is way too low. Uh, concussion is way too high. Concussion was not a good movie. <laughs> I said, I said with concussion, they literally just, uh, they, they, they cast Will Smith in that role just so he could go tells the truth. Tells yeah. the truth. Yeah. <laughs> that was the program in tier three though like i mean we're older so i know a lot of the youngest haven't seen the program but the program man like i mean come on man that's gotta that can't be tier three i mean yeah. i grew up wanting to be alvin mack the linebacker <laughs> in the program i grew up yeah. wanting to be darnell jefferson at tailback you know what i'm saying <laughs> like, like i mean come on man like I, I don't get that it's it's funny when you look at some of these like, I, I mean Let's look. Let's look. Go by tier. Tier six right now. You got uh, facing the Giants. All the right moves. Heaven can wait. Uh, necessary roughness. Air Bud. Air Bud. I feel like is getting disrespected in this, but I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Hey, Air Bud. No. <laughs> the long. The long shot. Paper Lion and the game plan. Do you believe that those are aptly rated tier six right there? 
Man, you know what? I, I don't think I've, have I seen Long Shots? If I have, I don't remember it. Like, you know, it's a good movie if you can remember lines from the yeah. movie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't really remember that one. I think uh, I'm a dog lover. Don't get me wrong. I've got two <laughs> dogs, but Air Bud is right where it should be. Um, <laughs> I mean, even Jerry Maguire. I think Jerry Maguire was tier three. I mean, that's a great movie, man. Like, am I right? Jer- yeah, Jerry Maguire. Is Jerry three. Maguire, yeah. You got Jerry Maguire in Tier 3. Uh, tier 3 is is an interesting one. Tier 3 has some good movies. But I guess the question is, right, what do you have above them that's keeping them out? Like, Longest Yard, the original Longest Yard is in Tier 3, which I'm not going to lie. I, I, I know a lot of people like the originals. I think that deserves to be right where it's at. It's a good movie. Uh, but I've definitely watched the uh, Adam Sandler one a thousand times more. Uh, yeah. The Express, I felt like could have been higher. The Express, I really enjoyed that movie. But then you look at the tier above it, right? We are Marshall. Great. The Replacements, great. Maybe Little Giants, oh, you can move thing. off of there. Yeah, that's got it. I mean, it's a great movie. Don't get me wrong. I, I grew up watching that. Um, but that's, I mean, the Little Giants, in my opinion, is not better than the program, The Express, or James yeah. Wire. You know what I'm saying? I um, could I, I could move Varsity Blues off there too, if I'm being honest. I could move that one down. Definitely, definitely. Varsity Blues is a great movie, but like I said, it's it's not better than those three that I named. I yeah, don't, I don't think it's better than those three. Gridiron Gang was iconic. You know that was that was a that was a, a great movie to me. Um, we are Marshall, of course, and then Draft Day. Draft Day is tough for me because like I enjoy Draft Day. Yeah, but realistically. I always equate it to the real life sense of it. And it didn't work. It's like, man, I love this job. We got these picks back. You pancake. It is like, yeah, but the Browns still suck. Right. You still got the break. The breaks beat off you. So it didn't matter (laughs) what you did. I want all my picks. You pancake eating. You know what? You You still got the breaks beat off you. It's it's one of those, like, it's like, uh, what's the, what's the, um, what's the baseball equivalent of that with Billy Bean? Um, I can't think of the name of it, but it's like, you know, they they go through this whole thing where he he does the computer stuff and he's just using pure numbers and analytics to build his baseball team. And then the A's go out and they make the playoffs. It's like, yeah, but they didn't get anywhere in the playoffs. Like the movie stops by them making the playoffs. Like, great job. They didn't win a World Series. Like the wrong, the wrong program. <laughs> <laughs> You got the. I should have. I should have upgraded. I got the. Wrong I should have upgraded the computer, man. I should have upgraded the computer. Right. Tier two, you got longest yard, uh, invincible. Brian, invincible. I'm not gonna lie. Invincible deserves to be tier two. It could be fighting for tier one. I do love the invincible. Uh, Brian song, the blind side and the water boy. Two Adam Sandler movies in tier two. Do you agree, J Mac? Yeah, I think. I mean. Uh... That's tough, man. The Water Boy is like it's a good movie, but it's a little, you know, it's it's more comedic football. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I, Invincible is a true story, and I think it's awesome. Uh, it takes place in a great city, the city of Philadelphia. Yeah, uh, you know, I went to college there, spent a lot of time there. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I would I would probably remove the Water Boy, keep Invincible there in that tier. Yeah, I thought I thought two Adam Sandler movies was a little high. Like I'll give you, I'll give you Longest Yard, Longest Yard for sure. That was a uh, well, I mean, it's still comedic football, but I feel like it's a little bit more, you know, there's a momentous moment at the end. Paul Cruz going down, dicing people up, yeah. uh, you know, uh, um, th- I feel like, th- you know, he, he's doing it for caretaker at the end. I feel like there was more to it that was like, OK, I can I can vibe with this a little bit more. Waterboy, like, I guess Waterboy did have me hype when he came back. He's like, remember when Bobby Boucher came back in the <laughs> bro? Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I get, I, that's a tough one. It's, a it's, movie, not a, it's, not, it's not a bad movie. And the blind what are you putting? What are you putting tier tier three above it though? What are you throwing in there? Right, like I'm gonna say. So the Blind Side was a great movie, but because you know Michael Orr was a teammate of mine in Baltimore. Yeah, and I asked him about the blind side, and he said a lot of that stuff wasn't true. Yeah, oh, he said, don't he said tell that. me that. I promise. Like he told me, like he said, like he liked it, but he didn't like it because they made it. They made it seem like he didn't know how to play football at all. Remember that? How? Yeah, you know, yeah. The, the the mom was teaching him how to play football. Well, he said yeah. he already knew how to play football. Like he said, it wasn't like he just didn't know how to get in the three point stance, didn't know how to block anybody. He already knew that. 
Right. Said, a lot of those things wasn't it was, was embellished in terms of that, when that movie was made. So that's why knowing that behind the scenes of that movie, I would bring it down. Yeah. Um, so that's why I would take that off of that tier, just because I know you know the background of it. So that's tier tough. three. Yeah, tier three. I mean, I you know there's a I mean like you said, Gridiron Gang. We are Marshall. If we are Marshall. I would move up over the Blind Side. I hate hearing yeah. stuff like that because yeah. I'm not gonna lie. That's what taints remember the Titans for me. Yeah, that's your top tier. Top tier. Remember the Titans. Rudy can go. I'm sorry. Rudy can go. I'm not a Rudy yeah. guy. Hold on. Hold on. I, 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 see, I love Rudy and I'm not saying it should be tier one, but that was one of my favorite movies growing up because I was a Notre Dame fan. Yeah. I just like the aura of Notre Dame and, you know, the yeah. of it. And I, I like his persistence and I think it's a, it's a good lesson even now for kids who, you know, may have aspirations of going on to play high level college football that may yeah. not have the size or the skill set to to achieve it, you know, from from just looking at a kid. But if you have that inner that inner uh, motivation, that self motivation, that heart and that passion and, and, and that dream, you're willing to do whatever it takes to achieve it. I think that's a good a good movie that that goes beyond football, because that can you, you can watch that to help motivate you in other aspects of your life besides football. Yeah, I just I feel one. Rudy is kind of the same thing at the end, too, um, <laughs> where uh, uh, um, Who's the quarterback? Why am I blanking on the quarterback? Um, played in the NFL. Is it Steve? It's not Steve Young. Uh, are you referring to just the player? The, the real, the real quarterback. Um, I can't think of his name of 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 Rudy. Um, but it, anyway, right? Like he ends up, he ends up. Uh, uh, he basically came out and was like, "Yeah, we didn't do all that. We didn't carry this man off the field. We didn't." Oh, like it was, uh, it yeah. was cool, you know what I mean. But it, it was a good movie, but it wasn't true. Um, yeah. so I, I just, I don't know, you know what I mean. Like, and Remember the Titans is the same for me. Like, I love Remember yeah. the Titans. I'm not taking it off of this tier. I'm keeping it in this tier. But when I found out that the real Coach Boone saw the movie and then started trying to act like Denzel, it did taint it for me a little bit. Any <laughs> given Sunday. Absolutely belongs up there. Shout out oh, Jamie Foxx. Yes. Uh, Friday Night Lights, all time? It's a great movie, but, uh, you know, it's, I mean, it's all debatable. All these movies are debatable depending on what type of, you know, movies you like. Um, uh, but, yeah. I'm not going to lie. My top four would probably be, I'd probably go Remember the Titans. I would probably have Longest Yard in my top four. Uh, I would probably throw the replacements in there. Mm. Nah, I'm not. I'm throwing We Are Marshall over the replacements in there. And then um, I would probably finish it off with well, Brian's song probably. Honestly, I'm not going to lie to you. We didn't even touch on that. The fact that yeah. Brian's song is tier two. Brian's song is an all-time football movie for me. Like, first off, Rudy over Brian's song is disrespectful. <laughs> are you yeah, crazy because it's, true because it's true right it's it's not yeah i agree with you like i'm not uh, you know bro like rudy over brian so that's tough though right like i i almost it's almost funny but it's like you almost don't want to hear right like the real story behind it it's like no don't tell me that i want to i want to live in this land where the movie was true yep i want to live in this land and remember the titans is tough for me because it's like one day I was sitting down and just like thinking about it. And I was like, you telling me an entire town changed their like <laughs> the way that they were. Right. Their belief system and stuff. And, like that. And, no, and, no. And, and, and one football season <laughs> <laughs> and a high school football season at that. That's, what is that? Eight weeks, nine weeks. Yeah, I mean, the way, it's a great movie. <laughs> but like you said, just knowing that, you know, a lot of that stuff may not have been true, that they, you know, manufactured a lot of that stuff. It kind of taints the the ranking in our terms uh, of where it should be, but any yeah. given Sunday, man, that's that's a, man. Any given Sunday is fantastic. You know, it's, Joe I, Montana, by the way, Joe yeah. Montana was Rudy's teammate at Notre oh, really? Dame. That's who it was. Joe Montana was his quarterback, and Joe was like, "Hey, he he said literally, we tease Rudy. <laughs> he said when we get together, we do stuff yet we tease him about it because it's like." You made yeah. this great name off of this movie, and he's like, "But it wasn't like, mm, come on, it baby. wasn't like that." Help your team out, Joe. Yeah, we carried him off. Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah, we, carried him off. we carried him off like a baby. <laughs> I think it was. Uh, um, 
I, I don't know, man. It was it was it was funny. It's just it's always funny to hear that where like, oh, I think the the part where he said wasn't true. I think they did carry him out. The part that he said wasn't true was like he gets in on kickoff, gets the big stop, all of that, right? Like everything that like leads up to that moment of him sacking the quarterback. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's just it's tough, man, because it's like I I love these movies. Don't tell me the truth behind them. Let me live in movie magic land. I'm telling you, the program has got to be like the program is one of my. I mean, the funny thing about the program, I still had the VHS tape of the program. That's how I, mean, like, I, <laughs> I might have me. all of these VHS. I'm telling you, all of them, man. Like the program. I mean, when Alvin Mack, right? The fact that you know they disrespected a man saying he couldn't read, but yeah. then you see him in the film room and he's breaking down every single play with the coach. You're like, man, <laughs> this dude is the the epitome of football smart. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like he. Like, that was a great movie, man. I mean, now, here's the tough part. Did you see uh, American Underdog? No, I did not. That what? is the Kurt Warner story. I think it's maybe three years old, two years old. Okay. And it is sad because that movie definitely underwhelmed. Yeah, I see. What is that? What tier, tier <laughs> that is uh, That is tier five, and it probably could have been tier six. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I was very upset because I loved Kurt. Kurt was everybody's the, the the story you wanted. It's it's the greatest. Like it literally was a movie life story. But see, and it was like, you got to see like Kurt. How, wh- like I don't, I haven't seen it, but I would be interested to see like what his response was in terms of when after that movie was made. Like, is it true, or did they, you know, manufacture things to make the movie better, or was that really truly about him being an underdog? You know, with him having to go through the arena league and different leagues, and then. You know, on that scene, Trent Green getting hurt, and then he was entrusted into the starting lineup. And then, yeah. obviously, the rest is history. He went on to be a Hall of Famer. Um, but before that, prior to that, you know, is any of that manufactured? You know what I'm saying? Is any of that made up up until that point to where he became a Hall of Fame quarterback? I don't know, man. I I I I, uh, I watched that movie, and I was like, okay, like I guess I do know the story, but. You know what it felt like? It was like, okay, tell me the things that I didn't know already. Like, I love the things that I know, but tell me, right, like, the other side of Kurt, what he was going through, the mental side. I felt like they didn't get into that enough on that. Because, like, I mean, like, it's literally like, hey, man, you may have a job or you literally may not. And he ends up going on to be a a Super Bowl winning quarterback, goes to another Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Like, I love me some Kurt Warner. I don't know. Yeah, they got like, you got to get into the nitty gritty because I think when you, like and and we're talking about Kurt, but all of these players in the NFL, whether there was a whether they are a first round draft pick to a seventh round draft pick to an undrafted free agent, they all have stories, right? Yeah, everybody has a story. Like you just didn't become a first round draft pick; you had to overcome some type of adversity. There was somebody along your way that told you you weren't good enough. You're not going to be good enough. You're not going to play the NFL. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I would hope that they would have highlighted. Kurt's career. I mean, he was even at one point, I think they said he was working at a grocery store, right? Like, wasn't he Yeah. supposedly bagging groceries at yep. a grocery store? And, and, and I'd be interested to see how many people told him that you'll never play quarterback in the NFL. You know, you're only going to play, uh, you know, in the arena league. You're never right. going to be great. And then you overcome all that adversity. You have that mindset, that gritty mindset to, to go on and win Super Bowls and to change the face of an organization and to go on to to having a Hall of Fame speech and being a Hall of Famer and being recognized as one of the all-time greats. Like, movies like that, you have to highlight all that adversity that yeah. that individual faced. I mean, it, to me, it's it's one of those... The, the biggest lesson to take away from a Kurt Warner, if, if you don't have any lesson from it, is you can hear a thousand no's and only take one yes. Mm-hmm. It took mm-hmm. one coach going, all right, go out there. Yep. And Kurt being able to execute in those moments, right? But you And it's also about being ready for the moment. He was ready for the moment. He he was ready for the moment the second time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but he was ready. He was ready for the moment after it was all said and done. Right, like you know, and and, and don't let you, your failures keep you down. Like you got to learn from him. Kurt Warner is the ultimate. He he is the ultimate story. And I'm not gonna lie. It's the reason why I was like, ah, oh, this movie's okay. Yeah. Maybe. And here's the thing. I did go into it with some really high expectations. You know, you know that'll mess a good movie up for you. Oh, like the movie, the movie will still yeah. be good, but it'll be like, man, I thought this was gonna be like, remember the Titans, change my life type of movie. Yeah, and it was like, ah, oh, okay, it's a, it's okay. That's when you, when, you know, you, you you anticipate it for so long, it finally comes out, and you're watching like, man, I'm <laughs> waiting for this. 
You know what I'm saying? And Especially go see it in the movies. Like I bought, I spent all this money. I spent twenty dollars on popcorn, ten dollars on a drink to watch this garbage. Yeah, and and the, and the problem is when you get the 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 bad opinion guy. Right, like every movie he sees is a good movie. He finds the good in the movie. So I had that guy telling me about the movie beforehand, like, oh man, it's so good, bro. Like you gonna love it as a sports fan. It's amazing. It's like, oh really? Like, man, so I'm I'm coming in, I'm like, ah, oh, let's boom, this is gonna be I was like, ah, okay. Yeah. Kurt Warner played football. Like, that's what I got from this. Thank you. Uh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but hey man we gotta get up out of here this has been another edition of the chicago bears podcast we appreciate you guys for showing so much love and sticking with us j mac going back out the mini camp and bringing back all the good nuggets for us next week we'll have all that continuing to break down what the chicago bears are doing moving forward every single week monday through friday so tune in with us on that hit that like button subscribe to the page and make sure that you are listening live on the espn chicago app as always it's your boy pat the designer back at it again for jason mckee y'all stay safe out there chicago bear down bear down Thanks.